Okay, so we just hit record and see how this goes. I really don't know how this conversation is going. It's kind of a serious one. So today I'm going to talk about uh, when I turn 30. Uh, I'm now about to turn 38 in a couple months. And uh, this was you know eight years ago. Uh, I just turned 30 and I noticed, you know, t- turning 30, I've talked to friends who've turned 30 and, you know, people face it different in different ways and dread it in different ways. Uh, I think for me, I didn't feel that bad. Um, but I did notice that I started like paying attention to certain things differently. So for instance, I said this in my last video, like I started paying attention to my like hairline and a big thing is I was like, Oh, well, is my hairline receding? And you know, I'd look at somebody and be like, okay, well, my hairline looks better than theirs. Oh, and I'd see somebody else i'm like oh my hairline doesn't look as good this it just became something like losing my hair became kind of this like uh i'm not gonna say obsession but it just definitely came became this topic that was like always on my mind and every time i went to like wash my hands at the sink you know in the bathroom i'd look at the thing and be like you know so and you know it was just kind of started bothering me and you know i knew it was any it wasn't anything i could uh control and i knew that you know, I was pretty lucky, you know, being Asian. And there was people when I was in college, we I was like 22 and, you know, people were like completely losing their hair already. Like, you know, completely losing hair. So I was like, you know, David, there's nothing you can complain. You know, don't complain about it. Your life's pretty good. Um, but the big thing that set me, uh, set me, I guess set, set me in the right direction. Um, and I never talked about this like publicly, I don't think. Uh, one of my, uh, one of my childhood friends, uh, passed away. You know, it was one of those things where it was, I was, it was me. And then it was me, uh, my two, my two friends, which they were twins. They were brothers. And then there was my brother. So it was like fourth grade, third grade, second grade. And like we were, they were sandwiched together. So we were always like, and they lived like down the street from me. And we were always together, like we were always riding bikes. It was them two brothers and us two brothers, and we would just like ride a bike everywhere. Man, we'd go to the comic book shop. You know, back then when you know kids rode their bikes and were more free range, and we would just do anything. We just ride the bikes, go run around in the woods. We do all this stuff, and um, yeah. So it was just one of those things where I was really lucky because my friend. Uh, he got along really well with my brother and they became really good friends. And, um, my brother was living in Mexico at the time and I was living in Austin. So I really didn't get to see them that often. And it was a case where like my brother was in town. So he had called my friend up and, um, like we had, we had gone out to watch a movie. Uh, this is another reason why like men in black three, it's crazy. Men in black three is one of my favorite movies. And if you ever watch that movie, it's about like, griffin that alien who can kind of see the future and has infinite possibilities for the future and just you know he's like there's parts where he's like oh this is the sad one where there's a lot of death i don't know why that was the movie we watched together but it was like my brother was perfectly in town and if he hadn't been in town he wouldn't have uh like i wouldn't have met my friend because you know uh it just wouldn't have the coincidence like the universe you know fell into place and we went to go watch the movie together. And then afterwards, we went to go Popeye's uh, to get fried chicken. My dad was like, oh, let's go get Popeye's. And I remember we showed up at Popeye's like 10 minutes before they closed. And like we were knocking on the door and the lady was like, okay, okay, I'll let you guys in. And then we walked in and being Asian and, you know, the way my parents are, they wanted like fresh chicken. So we're like, oh, can we get fresh chicken? And she was kind of like, well, I was hoping to sell you this stuff that we had left. But yeah, we'll fry you some fresh chicken. And they... They fried us fresh chicken and we took it home and everyone was happy and we gave it to my dad and my, my dad was like, oh, and it, it was funny because, you know, my friend w- was eating chicken and my dad goes into his little, you know, Asian rant where he's talking about politics or business and me and my brother just sneak off into the other room and leave my poor friend there to have to fend for himself listening to my dad's, you know, <laughs> rant. Yeah, and that, that was the last, that was the last time I, last time I hung out with him, the last time I saw him. Because like literally like a week later, I was at work and my brother just called me and he was just like, hey, dude, like Greg died. 
And I, I was like, I didn't even know what to think about it at first because I was like, what? What? What are you, what are you talking about? You know? And it was just, you know, an accident. Uh, he was on vacation with his wife in Colorado and the driver of the car like fell asleep and drove off the road and, and then he was gone, you know? And I'm, I'm really, really, well, how it changed me is because at that time I was 30 years old. It was probably like 30 years and like eight months. And like, I was sitting there worrying about all this stupid stuff, like my hairline and you know, this and that, and just all this stuff. And then all, and then he, he was, he passed away. And I was like, dude, he was 29 years old. He was just about to turn 30. And I was like, like, I've already had X number of months more than him. Like, how lucky am I? You know, like, it just became the way I like viewed life just became completely different because it was like, what can I complain about? You know, I have like, no matter what, even if I was like a bum and I didn't do anything for those eight months, I at least had those eight months more. And I had that opportunity to like, Okay, so if my life sucks, you know, why not do something about it today and change it? Like, he's never going to have that opportunity again because his time's up, you know? So from that time forward, I always made it, I always made it a priority for me to be like, dude, you know, you're, you're, if you don't use your time or if you don't, like, look at this stuff positively, it's an absolute, like, insult to your friend because i mean i'm just floating around through life complaining about stuff that somebody else doesn't have and i would he i bet you for him i bet you his family his brother everybody would love to have him back so you know like i really have to like you know live myself and my life better in order to like you know i know face him if i ever see him again or you know like, how can I, how could I face him if I didn't use my time up correctly? You know? So, like, I, I just, it became this thing where, like, all the time I have now is just, like, I'm very, I feel very lucky to have this time. And it's only been reinforced more as I've gotten older. Now I'm, like, 38. Now I'm coming closer to 40. I become even more, like, thankful of time because I remember... Uh, having being in the like you know me being in the video game industry quote unquote like you know however you want to <laughs> if you consider me as part of the video game industry like the same thing happened there were people that i looked up to that just like disappeared yeah i mean you know uh ryan davis was a big one like when he passed away like i actually met ryan davis at tokyo game show you know and he was like super happy and fun and you know, he was just like a really nice dude. I mean, I didn't know him personally, but I met him and he, you know, he seemed, he was very gracious to me and very like, just nice to meet me. And then like, it's even worse because he got married and then like, like a week after he got married, he died, you know, just in his sleep. And like, you know, he, he was like, I think 30 something at the time. And I was like, Jesus, man, like this, and then. I'm just going to say these names because this is like specifically like hit real home to me. Like, cause Ryan Davis, like I had like grown up l- listening to him when me and Brad did four PP. I mean, we, we listened to the, the hotspot, you know, it was Jeff Gershman and, you know, Bob Kaliko and Kerry Guskos and, you know, Ryan Davis was there, uh, was a Greg Kasavin. That's like the show that we listened to in college. And that's the show what that inspired, inspired us to go start our show. You know, we were always like, we want to be like them, you know, and for him to pass away, it's like, like completely a shock. And then, you know, like there's a guy named Andrew Yoon and again, he's, he was Asian and, you know, somebody that, you know, through the video game circles, you kind of heard of. And it was just one of those things where he was in Austin, like where we lived and he was just enjoying the weekend and he ends up, you know, drowning like just, you know, minutes from where, you know, Brad and I lived. And then suddenly he was gone. And, you know, again, he was around 30 something years old. It was still the same around the same time when I was like turning 30. I was out. I was around 30 something. And it was just like, Jesus, man, like it could just be gone in a flash. So 
you know, like why even spend any minutes, any time complaining about it or worrying about stuff that really shouldn't matter or you shouldn't, you shouldn't let affect. And then another one too, like Monty, Monty from Rooster Teeth, Monty Ohm. You know, like I remember seeing his videos when I was in, you know, college and just being like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool, I guess, you know, not never really thinking about it. And then he, him being on the Rooster Teeth podcast and then hearing about the way he went about his work, what, how they would say like he would watch like um, like martial arts films, but he would watch them at like, I think it was high speed or sl slower speed. Like he would watch them so he could like watch how the movements were and, and so he could use it into his own animation. You know, and there's like the most talented guy, like that guy will be like, forever m way more talented than i could ever be you know he was doing stuff like when 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 i doing stuff and doing stuff professionally like while i was still like just dicking around in college not even taking life seriously you know and like i always in my mind i always was like oh you know if i ever get big enough i want to go sit down with him i gotta i want to talk to him i want to interview him because he was pretty into like ddr and like the korean scene and then um like break dancing, he would like talk about how he used to do like certain moves and they wrecked his, wrecked his knees. And I was always like, oh, I want to get, you know, big enough to where I can just sit down with him and have a conversation, very candid conversation, just ask him all these things about life and dancing and all that stuff. And then, you know, he just, he passed away, just went in for a routine surgery, had like an allergic reaction. And then like, I, I didn't even know he went into allergic, uh, into surgery. And then it was just announced on Rooster Teeth podcast. They were like, dude, Monty, has gone, you know? And just like those, I think my friend, Greg, and then those three all happened around within like a year or two of each other. And that all hit me all at the same time. And I was like, just like, what, a, what do I have to complain about? Seriously? Like every day, every minute, every hour that I have on this earth is another minute to better my life make other people's lives better and like that's what i should be doing you know rather, rather than complain about what i don't have or what i wish i had like just go out and get it you know and i don't know if this message can you know transfer to any of you guys out there you know but i mean that's how it affected me and you know i, feel, I hope you guys can kind of understand what i'm where i'm coming from but yeah, so I don't know how else, how else to kind of end, end this. I've, I think I've, I feel like I've been talking in circles now. But yeah, I hope I hope that uh, I hope that you understand what I'm talking about. Thanks. Bye.